what on earth were Mizuno thinking with this club? I'm really not sure why we've come on the first tee because we're talking wedges. Let's do it and let's do it now. Hi everyone, James Robinson here. If you're new to the channel and this is your very first time watching my content, first of all, welcome to the channel. Second of all, if you are new here, please make sure you do consider hitting that subscribe button before you leave. And while you're down there, please make sure you ring the notification bell. That way you won't miss any of the great golf related content that I bring to you guys every single day. And if you didn't know what ringing a bell was like, and if you didn't know what ringing a bell was like, generally that there, so yeah. Also make sure you leave us a like because that way I know that you're enjoying this content and today we are talking about Today we are talking about these bad boys in particular uh, this one and This one So guys now the confusion is over with I even kind of confused myself there I have no idea why we started this video on the first tee but we did This is a review of the Mizuno T20 wedges now for me, whenever I think Mizuno, I think beauty, I think elegance, I think, well, basically this. For me, there's a huge talking point around these wedges. And I'm gonna cut straight to the chase, guys. What on earth are Mizuno thinking? Obviously, we have the chrome satin finish, we have the beautiful raw finish, which I've very much become accustomed to, but then we also have this. Really? Guys, as always, it's so important to me that you're a part of my videos because that's why I make them. And in this video, I want you to hit those comments below. What do you think to these Mizuno T20 wedges and what wedges would you potentially put in your bag for 2020? Would you go Mizuno? Would you go Titleist? Would you go TaylorMade? What about Ping? Guys, let me know. And you see, for me, I really just do not understand the need for this, well, monstrosity is that too much of a harsh word i just to be honest personal preference obviously you might love the blue wedges but for me no so much so that when mizuno contacted me and said james we've got some new wedges coming out would you like to review them we've got satin we've got raw we've got blue i was sort of like just send the satin and the raw because no nah. and you see i'm quite glad to get all that off my chest because aside from the horrific finish oh that's gonna have some spin on it oh Aside from the horrific blue finish, there is actually some pretty cool technology in these wedges. And if you do get the satin or the raw, they actually look pretty good. Absolutely love this raw finish. I've got to say, for however hideous the blue finish is, this raw finish really sort of makes up for it. If you all saw the course vlog in Portugal with Rachel McQueen where we swapped clubs, she uses the Wilson raw wedges and I absolutely loved them just because of the finish. That one's going to spin as well, is it? Go in. Oh. And you see, a real interesting point for me with Mizuno is however much they've been... That caught me by, su that caught me by surprise. There's a little lesson with Mark Crossfield, so that will be coming up soon as well. If you do want to see that, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. But anyway, back to my point. My big thing with Mizuno is however much they've been dominating the iron market, which, let's be fair, if you want a good-looking set of irons, an amazing feeling set of irons, just a nice, beautiful, honest, performing set of irons, you're going to look at Mizuno generally, aren't you? As well as maybe a couple of other brands. But they've never been able... Oh, that's another good one. Must be. Oh! They've never been able to dominate the wedge market. I know obviously you've got your Vokis out there. Now you've got your TaylorMade MG2s out there as well. You've got Callaway Jaws out there. Ping Glide wedges. This is a big market, isn't it? So why is it Mizuno have never been able to truly dominate the wedge market, do we think? What is it? Could it be that they keep bringing out blue wedges? It can't be that, can it? Because although we do have the blue wedge, we also have these things which actually look and feel pretty nice. I spoke to you earlier about how much technology goes into the wedges and there is quite a bit. See, that for me is a good collection, isn't it? Very good. And that one grabbed as well. So technology-wise, in the Mizuno T20 wedges, so often now we hear about wedges, we hear about CG, we hear about the moving CG, making the wedge more forgiving, allowing you to flight the ball better. That's exactly what Mizuno have gone with here. You can see we have a very thick bezel on the top there. If I move it over, because that is in fact the top. And what they've done really well here is allow you to still look like you've got a real thin top line, but packed weight under the top there in the high loft of wedges, the 58, the 60s, so that you can get a nice penetrating ball flight out of the rough into the wind it's not just going to pop up on you 
let's test that out with some uh, short-sided shots because generally that's where I do leave myself. More short-sided than that. So this generally isn't where you want to miss it on the par five. Spin. Oh, that was nice, wasn't it? But if you have the right wedge set up and you get up and down, that's got to spin. Sit. Ah, that's long. You see, it's vital for me that with a wedge you can... I think we'll have another go with that one. But you see, it is vital for me that with a wedge, especially a lob wedge, I can open it up, I can get the camber I want. The leading edge isn't too far from the ground. Uh, with this one, I'm not 100% sure. That one that I hit the second one, it bounced a little bit, caught the leading edge, went a little bit too far. But then there are obviously different grinds you can get to help you with that. I mean, that's beautiful. Again, that's just sits. Ah, oh, stop it. That's got to be good. Too much spin. And you see what's really clever about how they've done that bevel, how they've moved that CG to look thicker is they haven't done it with a pitching wedge, they haven't done it with a gap wedge because there's no need to. You don't generally need to worry about a gap wedge or a pitching wedge going too high, do you? They do feel good around the greens. That's another one nearly in. Look. I mean, for my short game, I'm taking that all day. And now you see, it wouldn't be a wedge review without talking grooves, would it? Obviously not. So the Mizuno T20 wedges come with quad cut grooves. Try saying that one quickly. And we also have hydro flow micro grooves in there, laser etched from top to bottom them to channel away any moisture. These have been very good today, actually. I've taken these out on the chipping green before this test, before this review, to get a proper feel for them. And as you can see, I got plenty of spin on there. The chipping green was wet, it was moist, it's dew on the ground, the golf balls are all wet. This time of year, the club face is always gonna be wet. And I still found that I got plenty of stoppage, I got plenty of spin. That's exactly what you want from your wedges, isn't it? And interestingly, it's not just the top leading edge that changes when you go from the sand wedge, lob wedge to the gap wedge, pitching wedge. You also have different grooves. Oh, that's a bit fiery. Still sat though. We also have different grooves in the sand wedge and lob wedge, which are wider and shallower, as opposed to narrower and deeper ones with the pitching wedge and gap wedge. So really, it's almost like Mizuno have taken a lot of technology from different branded wedges. We've got the Hydroflow finish to channel away moisture, which is similar to what we have in the ping wedges. We have the new CG moving design of the bevel on the top, which is similar to what the Voki SM7s do. And we also have, we also have that CNC milled face with micro grooves in there to get even more spin. Oh, that's got a spin. Oh to get even more spin on and around the greens. So apart from the hideous blue color, I know we're going back to it, but apart from the blue, the finish really, I've not got many too bad things to say about these wedges. I do think the lob wedge could sit nicer. So I've got, I've got the 58 degree with eight degree bounce in satin. And I've also got the 56 degree in 14 degree bounce in the raw. That's where these three finish by the way. So we've got a gimme near enough if you hit it. Uh, possibly a makeable one and then that one we're hoping it's for birdie so we might make par now you may have heard me whinging earlier in the video about the grind on these clubs there are three grinds available there's a standard bevel there is a subtle m grind or is the very aggressive well aggressive c grind for me for me the standard bevel works quite nicely because i feel like i can open it i can close it i can pretty much do what i want with it oh. how's that not going in flag out when you chip and I never really like to overcomplicate things with wedges, but I think it is imperative. That's done very well. It is imperative that you do get fitted for your grind, you get fitted for your loft, you get fitted for everything, just like you would throughout the bag. Hit it. Because otherwise, just like every single club in that bag, if you don't get it fitted, you are probably wasting your money. So guys, that's pretty much it from me with these Mizuno T20 wedges. As you can see, apart from the hideous blue colour, which we're going to forget about that, we're going to pretend that never happened. A bit like the ST180, we'll pretend that one didn't happen either. Just keep things simple, Mizuno. Keep it nice and elegant. Keep it, keep it beautiful like you guys know how to do. But I definitely think there's plenty of loft options, plenty of grind options, plenty of bounce options to play different shots you would want to play. They do feel generally soft enough and the raw finish is beautiful. Oh, what about that one? Oh, yes, please. One thing which Mizuno are pushing this year, just like a lot of brands, is personalization. So you can have personalized stamping on there in up to 12 different colors. And for me, that would look pretty cool. Imagine that, let's do it, let's do it now. Just stamped on there. It's always nice to have a bit of personalization, isn't it? 
they definitely get the spin you would want they definitely do pretty much most things you would want wedges to do they're just not quite inspiring enough to make it into my bag i would definitely put them on a list of wedges to try if you're in the market this year or next year for me it would have to be in that raw finish just because well it looks absolutely stunning Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this review on the Mizuno T20 wedges. As always, guys, hit those comments below. What did you think? Did you enjoy the video? Will you find yourself looking at these Mizuno T20 wedges in 2020? Hit that like button if you enjoyed the content. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you have subscribed but you haven't rung the notification bell, come on, you've got to give it a ring and then you'll know when I upload new content. And as always, guys, I very much cannot wait to see you tomorrow.